Hello everyone, in this video we are going to determine the standard deviation of a given set of data. The word deviation comes from the root word deviate, which means being off from the norm. So the question is like, is this off from the norm or uh, is it not off from the norm? So the norm that we're referring to here for standard deviation is the mean. So pretty much standard deviation measures the amount of variation or dispersion of a given set of data from the mean. So pretty much like are these numbers here close to the mean? Or are these numbers here far from the mean? So if we are able to do the math and the standard deviation value is high, which means that these values are far from the mean. Now, if the standard deviation, once we do the math and the standard deviation value is low or small, this means that these values are close to the mean. So let's get started with this example right here to see how do we solve for standard deviation. So the data below shows the daily after school study time in minutes of high school students. Determine the standard deviation. So the first step that we are going to do is since we uh, uh, the reference point for standard deviation is the mean. So first step is to determine the mean. So I'm just going to write here the first step. Uh, determine the mean. The formula for the mean is, so by the way, this it, these are the letters that we associate with the mean. Mean is a variable. Other books are using uh, mu as a symbol for the mean. Others are using the bar x. But for this class, we're going to use the bar x. So again, these are variables. They can be written in different letters. So the formula for the mean is... the sum of the terms over the number of terms. So what does this mean? We are supposed to add all of these terms. We divide it by the number of terms. So for this case right here, I'm going to add all of these. Okay, so I added everything, all of the numbers that we have there, and then we are supposed to divide it by the number of terms. So I'm going to count how many there are. One, two, three three, four, and five. So I'm just going to go ahead and divide it by five. So then we can go ahead and do the math for this. If we add all the top here, that would be 150 divided by five and 150 divided by five is 30. So our mean is 30. So what, what, we're what we're trying to do right now is to determine how far are these values from 30 because our 30 is the reference point, which is the mean. So the second step that we're gonna have here is to solve for the standard deviation. So that's the second step. Uh, we will have standard deviation as letter S. Now we are going to solve for the standard deviation. There are two types of them. Let's take the first one, which is the population. So population standard deviation is the uh, standard deviation of the whole population. So everybody, everybody was, um, surveyed. The formula for population standard deviation is the square root of, that's going to be the summation. So this E symbol right here means summation. Summation means we add. So that would be x minus bar x squared over n. So this is the formula for uh, population standard deviation. To better understand this, let's um, Plug in values here to better see what do we mean by this. So this is the square root of. So first, summation means we add everything. The x means these are the terms. So these are the x's. So we are going to subtract this value from the mean because standard deviation measures the amount of variation or dispersion. It measures how far away are these numbers from the mean. So what are we going to do is I write the 30 first. So I'm going to put this in. Uh, parentheses, so that would be 30 minus the mean, because again, these are x's, x, 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 and x, and this is bar x. That's what we solve from the first step. So 30 minus 30, and then that would be squared, because this is squared right there. The uh, summation tells us that we add them, plus we do the second, that would be 20. So 20 minus the mean, which is 30, and then we square it, plus... We do the third one, 35 minus 30, which is the mean. 
and then we square it, and then we add, and then that's gonna be 25, so that would be 25 minus the mean, so minus 30, and then this is squared, and then the last one is 40, so plus, that's gonna be 40, minus the mean, which is 30, and then we square it, and then we divide everything by the n, which is one, two, three, four, five. We divide it by five. So then we can go ahead and simplify this. Uh, that would be the square root of, so we are going to subtract this, 30 minus 30 is zero squared, plus 20 minus 30 is negative 10 squared, plus we have 35 minus 30 is five squared, and then that's plus 25 minus 30 is negative five squared. And then we have um, 40 minus 30 is 10 squared. And then again, this is divided by um, five. So then we can go ahead and simplify this some more. So that would be equal to the uh, uh, zero squared is zero plus negative 10 times negative 10 would be a positive 100. So we're gonna get all positives because we are squaring the whole term. So that would be 100 and then um, five squared would be 25 plus negative five times negative five is 25 plus 10 squared is 100 and then we divide this again by five. So pretty much if we add everything, the one on top here, this would equal to 250, and that's over five. So if we get the square root of 250 over five, we can go ahead and use the calculator for that. That would be, so that's gonna be square root of 250 divided by five would be 7.07. .07. So pretty much this is 7.07. .07. This is our population standard deviation. Now in most cases, we uh, it's not practical to um, uh, get the population standard deviation. We, we can get the uh, standard deviation of the sample. So that's the second, um, second type of uh, standard deviation right here. So I'm just gonna write it here, S, which is for sample. Sample means we take only part of the whole population. So it's pretty much the same thing, the same formula up there, that would be equal to the square root of the summation of x minus bar x squared over, the only difference is the denominator, that would be n minus one. So pretty much we um, we use the same, um, the same formula up here, so we, we solved it, we pretty much have to do exactly the same process, but this time around, the only difference is that the bottom would be minus one. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, make the division here so that we can solve for the sample standard deviation. So this would be equal to, again, it's pretty much the same thing, so that would be square root of 250 over n is five, so we just go ahead and say five minus one because that's n minus one. So that would be equal to the square root of 250 over four. So pretty much this can be, by the way, these are approximate values, so approximate values because we rounded it off. So that would be equal to, so that's gonna be square root of 250 divided by four. So then the value that we have is 7.91. So this is our sample standard deviation. So there's a difference between these two because if we say population, it's everybody. Sample is just a part of the population. Now let's have another way and more organized way to determine standard deviation. So this is the second example right here. So uh, the, the data below shows the number of words first graders can read in a minute. So this is abbreviated as WPM, words per minute. So these are the values. So we're supposed to determine the standard deviation. So the first step that we are going to do again is pretty much the same thing with the first example is to determine the mean. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write here step one. We determine the mean. So mean, which we represent as bar X, is equal to the sum of all these. So we're gonna add all of these. So I'm just gonna write it up here on top. Oh, 
Okay, and then we divide it by the number of numbers that we have here. We're gonna divide it by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we're gonna divide it by seven. So pretty much if we add all of these, this would equal to 175 divided by seven, 25. So I'm just gonna write here, 25 is our mean for this problem. Now we're going to determine how far are these values from the mean, which is 25. So this is a more organized way to do it before we move on to the second step. I have created a table here, so there's always gonna be a four um, column table and the number of rows will depend on the number of terms that are given to us. So in this case that we have here, on top, we're gonna write the heading here. So this will be for the X. That means these are the values. The second column is for the bar X, which is the mean. And then the next column that we have here would be the difference between these two. That's X minus bar X. And then the fourth uh, column that we have here would be X minus bar X squared. So this is what we put into this um, table here. First, we have 32, so we're gonna put all of these in here. So it's gonna be 32, 25, 23, 29, 20, 26, and 20. And then in here, we're gonna have the summation. We don't need the summation, again, means total. So we're not gonna need these uh, two uh, boxes right here, so we can uh, just um, cross it out. The mean that we have is the 25. So I'm just gonna write 25 to all of these. So 25 to all of these. Okay, now we are going to subtract these two. So that would be this column right here. That, that means that's X minus bar X. So 32 minus 25 is seven. 25 minus 25 is zero. And then 23 minus 25 is negative 2. 29 minus 25 is 4. 20 minus 25 is negative 5. 26 minus 25 is 1. 20 minus 25 is negative 5. For this column that we have here, we're supposed to square this. So 7 squared would be 49. 0 squared is 0. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. 4 times four is 16, negative five times negative five is positive 25, one times one is one, negative five times negative five is a positive 25. So pretty much this column right here would become all positives because when we square the negatives, it will come out positive. So the total for this, if we add all of these, that would be 120. So then we can move on to step two. So for step two, we are supposed to solve for the, for the standard deviation. There are two types of standard deviation. The first one is the population standard deviation. So then that is equal to the square root of, that's gonna be the summation of x minus bar x squared over n. So in this problem that we have here, our summation of x minus bar x is this one right here, because you have a summation of x minus bar x squared, so this value. So then we can go ahead and write the square root of 120 over the number of terms that we have here is seven. So then we can go ahead and um, determine the standard deviation for this, that would be the square root of 120 divided by seven is 4.14, so that's approximately 4.14. So this is our population standard deviation. Now let's determine the sample standard deviation. So that would be S again, but this time around we're looking for the sample. Most of the time, sample are the ones that are uh, the ones that we solve since again, it's impractical to determine the uh, population because population could be very big and it's impractical to determine um, the uh, value for each of the members of the population. So then we can go ahead and use the uh, sample standard deviation formula. That would be the summation of X minus bar X squared over 
the n is the number of terms. So then we can go ahead and plug it in. Please remember again that this value right here is our summation of x minus bar x squared. So that would be 120 divided by, so this is n minus 1. So then we can go ahead and say that's 7 minus 1 is 6. So that would be the uh, square root of 120 over 6. So then this would come out that's an approximate right there. So 120 divided by 6, so that's the square root of 120 divided by 6 is 4.47. So I'm just going to write 4.47 right here. It's, it's your choice to pick which of the methods you would prefer to do. Is it the more organized method we have here where we use table and then just solve for the uh, sample, I mean, for both population and sample standard deviation, both of them have two steps. Or you can do this method right here, the answers would still be the same. That's it. If you find this video helpful, hit like and subscribe for more math videos. See ya!